And just a few words for level, please, Jess. Hello, everybody. I'm looking forward to it being completely out of date and the Chancellor having resigned by the time this airs. <laughs> <laughs> Typical Labour, such low expectation, the Prime Minister will resign. Oh, yeah, sorry, yeah. Welcome to Have I Got News For You, I'm Adol Ray. In the news this week, at a b and in Wembley, staff applaud a woman who has just spent three hours listening to her husband list the pros and cons of their entire range of lawnmowers. <laughs> a new series of Total Wipeout is rumoured to be in the works after presenter Richard Hammond is spotted trying out the obstacles. <laughs> And at Dover Castle, a seagull spots a dropped chip at the worst possible moment. team tonight is a writer and broadcaster who recently quit Pointless, a long-running and popular show which will now replace him with a series of guest presenters. That'll never work. <laughs> Please welcome Richard Osman. <laughs> On Paul's team tonight is a Labour MP and opponent of Liz Truss's economic policies, who recently complained about the toilets in Westminster leaking into her office. So no wonder she's against trickle-down theory. <laughs> Please welcome Jess Phillips. <laughs> we begin with the bigger news stories of the week. Ian and Richard, take a look at this. That's the Prime Minister at time of recording. <laughs> <laughs> That's the pound on its way to see the dollar. Yep, not doing a U-turn. Quasi will be in the anti-growth coalition by Friday morning. Yeah, he's there now. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, um... <laughs> it's not going very well. She's had another very, very bad week. The economy has tanked, and a lot of people, I mean, obviously not me, have said it's because her and her Chancellor are useless. Mm. <laughs> In fact, it's the fault of a number of other people. It's the OBR and the IRA and... <laughs> uh, ELO. ELO. <laughs> I'm going to have to stick up for her. I think she said she would get things done quickly. <laughs> she didn't waste any time, did she? If she can tank the economy in seven days, think what she can do in two years. <laughs> <laughs> Nearly everything announced in the mini-budget isn't going to happen. No. So all the pain and all the turbulence will be for nothing. Yeah. It is about confidence, and if the markets, which, you know, I know you don't, but, you know, the Conservative Party believes in the markets, mm -hmm. if you ask the markets what they think and they say, you're useless, then you have to think again. It's interesting that the markets themselves have become part of the anti-growth coalition. Yeah. <laughs> they are famously quite pro-growth, aren't they, the markets? <laughs> and you know who's joined now? Oh, oh no. The I entire don't. Tory party. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think she's got a plan, Ian? Is there something that we've overlooked here that she may have? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that you guys are 90,000 points ahead in the poll. Yeah. Does that not scare them? They don't seem to have noticed. <laughs> it scares me. <laughs> <laughs> We're all scared. On current polling, there would be, like, three Tories left. Yeah. Like three. Ian Duncan Smith. <laughs> <laughs> so, her uh, right-hand man, I guess, is Quasi Kwarteng at the moment. What has he been doing? This week. He's met the IMF. Yeah. He's met the IMF, yeah. He's dissed the OBR. Did you hear his speech in the Commons? Did you see how many times he mentioned the OBR? For I somebody, was there. For somebody yeah. who doesn't want to meet the OBR, he mentions them a lot. Let's, let's have a look. As far as I'm concerned, and I speak to investors regularly about this, the OBR, the OBR, the OBR, the OBR, 
The OBI. <laughs> But I noticed in that clip there, the man sitting to his left seemed to be operating him with his pen on his, on his <laughs> nose. The man there, in the right-hand corner... Watch, here we go. Have you seen that? <laughs> oh, yes! <laughs> Jacob Rees-Mogg, he's been quite loyal throughout this, isn't he? But he wasn't happy with the BBC this week. I think he was very, very upset, as I think a lot of us were, that Richie got voted off Strictly Come Dancing. <laughs> Was Rishi on Strictly Come Down? <laughs> <laughs> can't stay in anything, can he? <laughs> yes, he accused the broadcaster of breaking impartiality rules after they stated that the market turmoil had been caused by the mini-budget. The business secretary went on to suggest that the fault was with the Bank of England. <laughs> yeah. Now, here's Gillian Tett, the US editor of the Financial Times, giving a nuanced response to Rhys Mogg's claims in an interview with Channel 4 News. Can you just give us your, your verdict on that? Well, to use non-technical -te term, that's pretty much bollocks. <laughs> I mean, accusing the BBC of being impartial, Nadine Doris came out and said, this government is lurching to the right. <laughs> that's equivalent to being attacked by Attila the Hun. <laughs> Have a look at this sinister bit of political censorship on the BBC this week. This is extraordinary. Talking of pushing the boundaries with the BBC, it's something you guys do week in, week out on Have I Got News For You. Are you surprised with what you can get away with sometimes? <laughs> I'm, I'm... OK. <laughs> What were you saying? I was saying... <laughs> there are a number of rebels making trouble for Liz Truss. Nadine Doris, she's been writing in the mail. What has she been writing about? Boris Johnson. Yeah. She's always on about Boris Johnson. Yeah. It's always... What are you suggesting? Yeah. I'm suggesting she loves Boris Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> How much? Loads. <laughs> Yes, Nadine Doris has been writing in the mail wishing for a Boris comeback, although it's extremely unlikely, she said. I'm sure he's very busy doing his surgeries and talking about the problems in Uxbridge. I'm sure his constituents are being incredibly well served yes, by him. Yes, absolutely. No, <laughs> <laughs> Back to energy then. Now, you'd think people might appreciate some government advice on how to save energy. Why won't there be any? Because there's no government. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's one half of it, yeah. There was a U-turn. There was going to be, wasn't yeah. there? Mm. Liz Truss blocked a government ad campaign masterminded by Jacob Rees-Mogg to advise people on how to cut energy use on the grounds that it would be too interventionist. I'm struggling with the phrase masterminded by Jacob Rees-Mogg. <laughs> yeah, that was... <laughs> I mean, this thing about government advice, do you think we should go as far as having public information films right now? I used to love them. I loved them. I mean, I've never climbed an electricity pylon. And no. That must be... <laughs> yeah. And it'd be easier for me than most people. <laughs> <laughs> would you like to see a public information film? I yes, certainly would. would. Let's have a look at this one. This Christmas, with less energy available, we must provide for essential services and hospitals who will be at risk. We can save most by heating one room only. So, cut down at Christmas. <laughs> ho, ho, ho. <laughs> do you remember much about this? So what, what did you have to do? I mean, I, was... I mean, Ian would have gone through it. I mean, one of the wings of his castle would have been completely <laughs> dark. Make sure you don't fall in the moat. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the drawbridge, Daddy? <laughs> Nicola Sturgeon, she keeps banging on about another independence referendum. Oh, come on. Let it go, Nicola. Uh, but why is she in trouble this week? She says she despises the Tories. Yeah, she says, I detest the Tories. It's a terrible thing to say, Jess, isn't it, really? You wouldn't say that, would you? I don't detest them all. <laughs> I detest some of them. What about Theresa Coffee? -y 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 -y? Do you know, they all call Theresa Coffee Tiz. Tis. Tor Tory women all have these, like, shortened versions of their names, like Mims and Flick and Tiz. And so when I realised this, I was like, oh, I want one, but mine would be Jizz. Oh. <laughs>
<laughs> so this is another volatile week for Liz Truss's government with more screeching U-turns. Liz Truss warned the public this week there are no easy choices. There will be one, Liz, come the next election. <laughs> <laughs> After Trade Minister Connor Burns was sacked because of his alleged groping a younger man, he was replaced by Greg Hands. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it was either him or Bob Arstickler. <laughs> According to the Mail, the Prime Minister got a mixed reception as she tried to rally MPs behind her plans in a private meeting. One attendee said, it was like someone trying to light a fire using a magnifying glass using damp wood in the dark. <laughs> you laugh now, but come December, it's how we'll be cooking our Christmas potato. <laughs> Paul and Jess, take a look at this. Oh, OK, yes, that's Katie Boyle back in the 60s Eurovision Song Contest. Ukraine are the winners. United Kingdom came second last year, so they were very happy. There's the Chancellor of the Exchequer. <laughs> uh, that's people in Liverpool very, very pleased that they have won the chance to host the Eurovision Song Contest. Ukraine won the Eurovision Song Contest earlier this year, but for various reasons that are obvious, they won't be holding the event next year, so Liverpool have won. How did we find out that Liverpool were the hosts? It was announced. Yes, it was announced. <laughs> Some of us watch TV, some of us read it in the papers. Exactly, yeah. Perhaps on the internet. Even so, on the internet. I think different for different people. The BBC. <laughs> <laughs> We're now going to go through all the yeah. entire audience. <laughs> yes, Leigh, how did you find it? <laughs> I've just found out this minute. <laughs> it was announced by Graham Norton on The One Show. Uh, yeah. Here he is. But some eagle-eyed viewers pointed out that Norton had ruined the surprise as the card he was holding during the reveal had this written on it. <laughs> I mean, I'd rather Ukraine were hosting it, but given they're not, it's exciting that uh, yeah. we're hosting it. Do you think we'll get Sam Ryder back to do our song this year? <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Richard, have you seen this programme before? <laughs> <laughs> He's never heard of Vera Lynn. <laughs> <laughs> I did the UK votes once for Eurovision. As oh, the my God! Best thing I've ever done that in television. You've made it. Our 12 points. Go to Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> Was she singing? <laughs> On the subject of Ukraine... Yes. Now, it was Vladimir Putin's 70th birthday last week. He doesn't look 70, does he? No, he looks good, doesn't he? No. Well, I wouldn't say good. Um... <laughs> <laughs> On Saturday, an explosion on the Kerch Bridge that connects Russia to the illegally annexed Crimea caused it to collapse. Now, although the Ukrainian government haven't officially taken responsibility for the attack, there were a few clues that they may have been behind it. What were they? I gather they've been on Twitter. The Ukrainian National Security Secretary posted footage of the explosion alongside a clip of Marilyn Monroe singing Happy Birthday, Mr <laughs> President. <laughs> the Ukrainian government tweeted... Sick burn! <laughs> and they also released a commemorative stamp with this design. <laughs> Why else wasn't it a very fun birthday for Vladimir? Did he want Glasgow to win Eurovision? <laughs> <laughs> he had to call off his official birthday celebration. But luckily for Putin, his friends cheered him up with a few messages and gifts. What did Putin get from the Belarus leader, Alexander Lukashenko? He got a tractor. He did, yes. He got a voucher for a tractor. Here it is. <laughs> and that is the entire Belarus army. <laughs> what was his gift from the president of Tajikistan? I'm the only one who took an interest in this. Yeah, go on. He was given a pyramid of melons. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's have a look. Oh. I mean, that's why you'd rather have a voucher. <laughs> 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 this is the announcement that Eurovision Song Contest will be held on behalf of Ukraine in the city of Liverpool. The bridge linking Russia to Crimea was wrecked by an explosion the day after Putin's 70th birthday. According to the Mirror, the blast set fire to seven oil tankers. And try as he might, the birthday boy couldn't blow them out. <laughs> <laughs> And so to round two, the jigsaw of news. Fingers on buzzers, team. Yes. Yeah. We've got a new king. We have got a new king. Say what? Yes, but yeah. what's the story specifically <laughs> about? There's going to be a coronation. Uh, it's the coronation of the king next May, but essentially they're not coinciding with the FA Cup final. 
Yes, this is the devastating news that King Charles' coronation might not be an extra bank holiday. Oh. It will take place on the 6th of May. Mm. That's a Saturday. Yes. Some noted that this could be in order to avoid any more damaging effect on the economy. <laughs> <laughs> King Charles must have thought, this is going to be a tough month or so for me. I'm following up someone who is extraordinary. Yeah. When he meets this trust, he must say, thank <clears throat> fuck for you. <laughs> He actually said something not quite as expletive, but pretty much as good. Have you got the footage? Yes, we have. Promising, Your Majesty. Your Majesty. Lovely to see you again. Oh, it's a great pleasure. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> he said, You're back again, presuming that after a week she would have gone. <laughs> <laughs> I think in everyone's defence, I think he's saying dear, dear, because they're on TV, and he's like, this is a bit weird, isn't it? Yeah. I think it's what think? he's saying. He's Sir Richard saying, Osmond will well. be back. <laughs> <laughs> at the coronation, what does Charles want at his ceremony? What does he ask? Oh, for? is it me? Oh, my goodness, is it me? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, I think he's just going to have a voucher. <laughs> <laughs> According to the Mail, Charles has an instinctive aversion to pomp in the wrong circumstance. Do you get those kind of aversions, Paul? <laughs> no, no, I've managed to fight them off over the years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's a row about the crown. Oh, there is a row about the crown. Tell us about the row about the crown. Well, I think it's gone downhill in season four. <laughs> 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 the Koh i Noor diamond. Yeah, the, the Koh i Noor diamond. What's the row about? It's only on the crown that Camilla's going to wear. It's something you could probably get rid of, and most people would be happy. And various other governments say it's theirs. The Indian government, the Iranian government. There's a whole lot of other people, due to its history, say this isn't even British. Yeah. So, in fact, she's wearing a crown from a Christmas cracker. <laughs> <laughs> what BBC show is Prince Charles set the repair to shop. appear on? Yes, the, the repair, repair shop. shop. He's taken in Prince Andrew's reputation to see what they can do. <laughs> It's been in the family for years. <laughs> <laughs> the items he's bringing for repair are an 18th century bracket clock and an urn. Oh, oh gosh. Mm. Well, he's not had it that very long, has he? <laughs> <laughs> This is the news that Charles and Camilla have decided on the date set for their coronation. Also this week, an antique chair sold for a world record £14.4 million. It's hundreds of years old, fragile, and a new owner has been advised <laughs> not to sit on it. But it's still safer than most Conservative seats. <laughs> Fingers on buzzers, teams. Here comes the next one. This is the uh, full English breakfast which uh, uh, an academic this week has said isn't very English, and most of the constituents in it don't come from England. And that's what they study now at university. <laughs> <laughs> Why is someone not doing a study into the fact that people might have sourdough toast with a fry-up, which is the worst thing in the world? What's wrong with sourdough toast? Oh, just because it rips your mouth apart and it's not as mm. good as real toast. <laughs> What is your problem with anybody else having sourdough toast? Yeah. No. Fascist. Yes. <laughs> right. Right. But, yes, I will take that. I will take that. <laughs> Where exactly is English Breakfast from, then? A Cambridge academic, Dr Harjun Chang, claims in a new book that the breakfast can't be labelled English because the bacon is Danish... Yes. Yeah. ..the hash browns are American... Yep. ..and the Please. eggs could be from anywhere. Well, they're from chickens. <laughs> <laughs> We've got more bad news. Dr Chang says that fish and chips is not English either. According to him, that dish came to Britain from Spain or Portugal. Yeah, but it doesn't come there every day, does it? <laughs> what about Welsh rabbit? Yeah. Scotch egg. Irish. Irish egg. juice. Lancashire yeah. hot pot. Lancashire hot pot. Where's that yeah. from? Yeah. The Lebanon. And what about the traditional Christmas dinner? What does he say this about that? This bloke's a right miserable sod. <laughs> 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 Chang told the Radio Times yeah. almost everything in Britain's Christmas dinner isn't from Britain. 
The potatoes are from Peru. Sure. The turkeys are from Mexico. No, they're not. The carrots are from Afghanistan. And the Brussels sprouts are from Belgium. And the gravy's from the moon. Who's listening? <laughs> <laughs> Listening to this bloke for. <laughs> also, it isn't like the, the individual parts, it's the ensemble. Yeah. Exactly. For God's sake. To use man. a good English word. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> British ensemble. <laughs> I'd go round his house and stick a couple of sausage up his letterbox. <laughs> <laughs> hey, where's that come from, mate? <laughs> OK, sticking with breakfast, what new and exciting condiment has recently been released? <laughs> Could you release condiments? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go, oh, the world is yours. <laughs> <laughs> it is egg chop. Oh. oh, yes. Here it is. Squeezable runny egg yolk. Oh. How has this section of the show been the most traumatic? <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look at egg chop on a sandwich. Look at that. Oh. No, no, Look no, at no. That. It's no. lovely. At least it's not sourdough. <laughs> <laughs> that's not a yolk colour. Yeah, it's, yeah, that looks, it that looks, looks kind of ready. It looks no, so... you're not. Look, you're looking at the wrong bit. Is it the moat around the back it's... castle? <laughs> it's the bo... yes, it's the moat. It's... Oh, so they just that's that. It but what the hell is that What's stuff that then? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's bean chop. <gasps> I don't care what it's bean. What is it now? <laughs> This is the news. A sausage manufacturer in Yorkshire has released some new flavoured ketchups, including egg chop, described as squeezable runny egg yolk. Very handy. You can just pick it up and squirt it directly onto your shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Time now for the odd one out round. Just one between you this week. Your four are Diane Abbott, Worcestershire County Council, Wigan Athletic Football Club and Spinal Taps, Nigel Tufnell. Nigel Tufnell famously has an amp that goes up to 11. Diane Abbott was... There was some mocking for counting mm -hmm. nonsense. Worcestershire County Council is counting that. <laughs> is it something to do...? <laughs> yeah, he's right. Yeah. Yeah, he's right. It's got the word counting. Yeah, um, that's one of the worst answers thank you. we've ever... Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Worcestershire County Council have failed to count something. They've failed in something. Well, well Wigan, it? there's 11 players on the football team. Yes, that's right. So that's 11. Yeah, oh, 11. Is it something to do with that? Did no. they miscount to 11? Oh, that's a good guess, though, isn't it? It's, it's not. Let me tell you. <laughs> it's, it's not. It's not. <laughs> They've all made a mathematical miscalculation, except for Worcestershire County Council, who have made a spelling error. We hope it's Worcestershire and not county. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Could we see? It wasn't county. They misspelled Worcestershire. They must have done then. No. No, council then is the no. only other word that we've mentioned in that no. three. Worcestershire County Council don't just go around just only writing <laughs> round <laughs> <and> words. <laughs> Worcestershire oh, I see. I misunderstood. There are other words available for use by ah, Worcestershire Council. Oh, you see. Council. So, so, essentially... Inside be... knowledge. Yeah. I'm going to go for Birmingham. Did they spell that wrong? I think Jess might have hit the bullseye. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> on a new oh, yeah. road sign on the A448, they made this obvious error. Let's have a look. <laughs> oh, my God! <laughs> Is this not a new sort of positive campaign? From now on, it's Brimingham. It's Brimingham. <laughs> Despite the error, local papers reported that many drivers found it hard to notice the misspelling when driving past <laughs> because the speed limit sign had been misprinted as 200 instead of 20. <laughs> <laughs> Former Shadow Home Secretary Diane Abbott famously miscalculated police salaries in the run-up to the 2017 election. But what miscalculation put Wigan Athletic in trouble this week? They, did they put 12 players on the pitch? No. Did they put 13 players on the pitch? <laughs> <laughs> no. Were the goals the wrong size? The goals were the wrong size. Uh, yes, they? exactly Happens. that. They were hosting a game against Cardiff City, mm -hmm. in which it turns out the crossbar of one goal was two inches too tall. But they lost the match, with Cardiff scoring two in the illegal goal, including one that would have bounced off the crossbar if it weren't too tall. That can't be right, because if it, if it would have bounced off the crossbar if it wasn't too tall, well, the crossbar's lower, so the ball's higher. No, I think, I think it's possible. I, think it's possible. Oh, no, I don't care! <laughs> <laughs> Just leave me alone! <laughs> How did spinal tap guitarist Nigel Tufnell once make a catastrophic mathematical error? Uh, with Stonehenge. Yes, what did he do? Um, he put inches instead of feet on the stage design, so when Spinal yes. Tap turned up, Stonehenge was this big. <laughs> 
let's have a look at the moment. A daybreak. Time now for the Missing Words round, yes. which this week features as its guest publication, Irish Naturist Association newsletter. <laughs> I'd buy it for the crack. <laughs> <laughs> and we start with, when the clock strikes 12, the place to be is what? Is it from the Irish Naturist thing, and is it, is it the crack of dawn? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. that's the crack. crack. It's not the crack of dawn, but that would have been a good one. When the it? clock strikes 12, the place to be is the Ring of Kerry. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah. uh, when the clock strikes 12, the place to be is the Happy New Year party. No. Oh. You just love a New Year's Eve firework display. For a few minutes, it solves that embarrassing question of where to look. <laughs> <laughs> Woman spots what in her curry? Judy Murray? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's going to be... It's a Virgin face of something. Mary, the face, yeah, the face yeah. of Elvis. Face of Charlton Heston. <laughs> Paddington. You're more in the same area as with, with Paddington. Oh, really? Rupert, Rupert Bear. Bear, yeah. No, Rupert Bear. You're, you're, yeah, you're in Rupert that. Murdoch. Winnie the Pooh. No, <laughs> oh, Michael Goat. <laughs> <laughs> Shrek. Yes! <laughs> Woman spots the face of Shrek in her curry. This week, Lisa from Enfield found the face of Shrek in her plate of Hariali green curry. Here it is. <laughs> Lisa keeps seeing faces in her food. She looked at the curry's accompanying bread and all she could see was her nan. <laughs> and finally, the most important thing to remember about the Irish Naturist pub quiz in Cork is what? Make sure that you're wearing clothes. You're almost there. The most important thing to remember about the Irish Naturist pub quiz in Cork is... clothing is optional. That can't be right. Yes. Country I've lane. seen weirder things in Cork... Have you? ..than people doing a pub quiz naked. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think of anything weirder than doing a pub quiz naked. No. <laughs> and I'm trying to think of a format I can sell to the BBC. <laughs> 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 Yes, you could call it pantless. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the final scores are... Ian and Richard, five. Paul and Jess, six. Oh, well done. Yes, you said like the final third. On which note, we say thank you to our panellists, Ian Hislop and Richard Osmond, Paul Merton and Jess Phillips, and I leave you with news. That Downing Street confirms that over the next few months, Liz Truss hopes to meet all the major world leaders in person. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, dear. <laughs> in Norfolk, as energy prices continue to rise, locals move to a new residence to ensure a regular supply of warm gas. <laughs> <laughs> and at Jacob Rees-Mogg's townhouse in London, the hunt continues after his youngest member of staff goes missing. <laughs> Good night. From Swansea to Derry and laughing all the way looking for the funniest comedian in the new Comedy Awards. Press red to watch that on BBC iPlayer now. Right, we need to get to the bottom of Am I Being Unreasonable? Here next on BBC One.